Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. Today we have with us Jenna St. John, actress, writer, and producer. Her most recent project is Sexpectations, a comedy TV series about a romance writer who realizes she's sorely lacking in certain aspects of the romance department. Full disclosure, I play Emily the intern in the show, which is how Jenna and I met. Jenna, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Yay! So, And you actually just had your screening of the last three episodes of a six-episode series, and it looks so good. The thank whole thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, we'll get into that. We'll start from the beginning. Now, I know, I thought this was really cool. You mentioned you started as a novelist. Did you go to school for, um, I guess, would that be literary, English? I don't know. Writing. It was. Um, So starting as a novelist is um, a little bit of a stretch. (laughs) Um, So I went to, I got my bachelor's degree in English with a concentration in creative writing. And then I went to Mm -hmm. grad school with the goal of becoming a novelist. Um, graduated from grad school. So I went to grad school for fiction writing. Um, and then I was so burnt out from prose. Um, at that point, um, I decided to write a screenplay because I was auditioning for all these roles, um, that I wasn't excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, let me just, you know, let me just write a great role for me or for another woman. Um, and then the rest is history. I never went back to pro. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's funny. all hard. All of it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, and foolishly, I thought like, oh, well, screenwriting, screenwriting is so much easier. Um, and then when you, you know, you get into it, you go past the beginner phase and you're like, oh, no, no, this is hard, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, what genre did you want to write fiction in or did you not really have a focus? Oh, you know, um, I just literary fiction, you know, I love, I, I'm a huge reader. I'll read anything, um, you know, horror, uh, fantasy, anything. I'll read anything. Um, uh, and yeah. So in, at the time when I was in grad school, all we were reading was like the classics. Mm. Um, so in my head I was like, oh, well I'll just be the next, you know, great American novelist. Obviously that sounds easy. (laughs) um so it it never really got there I never got as far as finding my voice as a prose writer Uh, okay yeah no it does it's funny because I'm kind of in the other bucket where I started out in like screenwriting and I still write scripts every so often but now I'm in novels and like for me besides obviously the format and other things the biggest difference is like at least when I write a novel, I don't have to collaborate with anyone and worry about like wardrobe and camera angles and like lighting. But like besides the technical stuff, what do you see as like similarities and differences between the two writing worlds? You know, um, you know, development is similar. The The need for a beginning, middle and end is similar and the need to um, to respect your audience and, you know, keep it, keep it moving, like keep everything entertaining. Um, the difference is, is in the dramatic action in a screenplay is all visual. It's all external. And the great thing about prose, um, that I wish I could do, but I can't, um, that's why I write screenplays is the dramatic action can be internal. And that's just fascinating. And I think that's why like you can read a book and you feel like you really know someone like you're there and you know when um when somebody dies you you feel it you feel it in your heart um and in in a screenplay i think it's um so much harder to achieve that because you can't like capture a life um in 90 minutes really um but yeah, did, did I answer your question? I you feel like did. I just kind of rambled. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, it's it's interesting, too. And I know you come at it from an acting background. One thing I always think that's interesting, like you're talking about the internal dialogue, is like, yeah, like in a book, you as the reader, as the audience are sort of told 
what the characters are feeling and thinking because that's just how it is. But like when you're watching a film or a TV show, because they're not necessarily monologuing internally, you as the audience sort of imprint on them a little bit more and you feel it a little bit more because you're kind of putting yourself in that yeah. character's shoes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, That's absolutely. Cool. I noticed you also act in a lot of the projects you've written. So did your writing, your screenwriting start like as a showcase for your acting work? Like you're like, I need to write the roles that I'm not finding for myself. Or were you just like, nah, I just want to write to see how it all turns out? Um, You know, initially, um, I... It's not acting is not something that um, brings me the same kind of joy as writing. If I never if I'm never in front of the camera again, I think I I would be happy. Oh, wow. (laughs) I know. Um, I'm extremely camera shy. Um, I think I'm I I guess I consider myself like a closeted introvert. Um, So (laughs) I I feel very comfortable um, in the writing space and collaborating with you know, other writers and producers and directors, um, to tell the story, um, acting, I feel like I came up through theater and that's just so different from film and being a young adult or a teenager being like, oh, well, naturally I'll just pivot into being a movie star. Um, and you don't realize like how different it is. Um, so yeah, um, I, you know, I, I think I, I act, you know, expectations. Um, we ask a lot of our actors um, in situations, and you know, uh, there is a lot of like simulated sex. And I think I I put myself in that role um, so I wouldn't have to ask someone else to do it. If that makes sense. Oh, that's interesting. Because I was going to say, I mean, uh, so we'll get into it, but you're basically like the second lead. So you have a lot of screen time. So right. that's surprising that you're like, I didn't want to do it. But I'm like, but you were on screen so much. <laughs> well, I thought right. that was interesting because usually, you, I mean, I know a lot of actor writers who, you know, they write, they be, kind of become writers because they want to write stuff for themselves to be featured in so they can get mm-hmm. bigger things. And here is someone who wrote something for herself, but not as the lead. So I thought that was interesting. Did You know, when you, usually like you come up with your main character, usually, you know, you think of it, it's almost like a, autobiographical kind of thing or or you relate to the character at least but in this case is what you know you wrote a character for someone else to play yeah and I think uh probably in real life I'm I'm more of a Katie than a Victoria um Katie being the lead of lead of sex expectations um and Sophia Medley plays her and she does a fantastic job and she actually wants to be an actor um but and Sophia and I are very close. We've known each other for a long time. So with everything before I wrote any compromising scenes for Katie, I would call Sophia and run it by her. Um, and then I didn't have that same kind of rapport with the other actors. So I gave most of that to the most of the other stuff to me. That's interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing to me is like, honestly, so obviously. We'll just put a plug in now. Guys, check it out. It's on Amazon. But it's not really, I mean, if I had to classify it, it's like PG-13. I don't think it's super raunchy or anything. So like a lot of actors, trust me, a lot of actors would be fine doing a lot more. (laughs) So that's interesting that you were like, oh, I don't know if people would be comfortable with that. Because, yeah, trust me, actors have been asked to do a lot more and a lot further. So, Oh, um. I'm fully aware. And, you know, as, as an actor in other projects, um, I've been asked to do a lot more and I kind of, and there were certain productions where I felt like it was handled well and other productions where it wasn't. Um, Mm. so I definitely wanted this to be a safe space production, but even like as simple as a kiss, we would have, um, we would have talent kind of raise their hand and say, Oh, you know, how's this going to go? That's um, really good. Yeah. And we would have to um, talk them through it because obviously we're asking actors, other actors to do a lot more than a kiss at times. Um, so when that question came up, it kind of took Kevin and I by surprise. Like, oh, yeah, everyone's boundaries are in different places. And so we would always tell our actors, like, we hired you for your talent, not for your you know, 
I don't know, your risk aversion or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Um, Kevin, Kevin was the director, correct? Right. Correct. Kevin, Kevin Good's the director and he's my husband as well. Convenient. (laughs) That works out well. (laughs) So speaking of safe space, because you have collaborated with your husband on several other projects, what is that like working with um, your husband on such high stress projects like TV and film? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's good. I mean, we met we met through working. Um, So I think for us, it was a natural, a natural fit. Um, We didn't have to try and figure it out. Um, You know, uh, that's kind of this kind of where we were introduced to each other. Um, in this, um, in Sex Expectations, it was interesting because he had to direct me in a sex scene and direct another, a lot of other um, scenes as well. Yeah, and it, it was great. It was great having him. Um, and he was always, he's always been, you know, my biggest cheerleader. And he would tell me, just write the story you want to write. Don't worry about producibility. We'll figure that out later. Um, if we need to scale something back, we can do that. And then we just never do. Well, that's cool. Um, one of the things I thought was really interesting is, I, you know, for a lot of indie productions, this has a really high production value, I thought. You do a lot of unique things. You've got some fantasy, some puppetry. You've got um, a lot of stuff going on. It has a very good production value for an indie uh, production. So how was it going out and getting it funded, you know, to do a production versus pitching a show idea to like a studio or a production company to, for them to make it versus, Hey, give us money to make a show. Um, I think this is what we know how to do. Um, so we're content creators. Um, we make, you know, we made a feature together, um, a seven, eight years ago. Um, and, you know, we made it ourselves through, we financed it ourselves, including sex expectations. We financed it ourselves. Um, and we, I guess we don't know how to do the other thing. We're, you know, uh, we're both like super unconnected. So all we do is just put our head down and try to do good work and let our work speak for ourselves. That's a, that's a good strategy. You know, obviously you got to start somewhere and You've done great. I mean, it's it was the number three comedy on iTunes and Apple TV, and it was above Parks and Recreation. I mean, you can't get better justification than that, right? Yeah, definitely. That was that was an exciting week. Was that just all through word of mouth, or did you guys do an advertising campaign? No, it was a hundred percent word of mouth. Um, so oh, nobody wow. was more surprised than we were. That's awesome. That's amazing. Good for yeah. you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you said you did a movie uh, like seven years ago, and I noticed in your credits that Sexpectations is listed as a TV movie on there. Did did you do a movie version of it first or a short film? Um, so we did we did the pilot, the pilot episode, um, ah. and it went to a few festivals and it did really well. It had a huge audience response, um, and it actually got us a few meetings. Um, and one of the meetings was um, with this a studio and the guy was basically like you're gonna be fine just keep doing this like five years from now you're gonna be just fine um so we kind of took that to heart yeah that's good advice that's a good Um, good validation so so then when you started when you did the series was that still the pilot and you just made more episodes or did you reshoot the the whole thing we did not reshoot the pilot we did open it back up and clean it up um, okay, so, so we, it's know. just listed in IMDb in two places, even though they're all part of the same series. Yeah, um, it is. It is part of the same series. I guess it, there is some some differences. Like we did open up editorial a little bit to make it um, flow better, tighter. Um, so, yeah, but it's it, the same shot pilot, I guess. Cool. You know, where where did you get the idea for the series at the first place, actually? Um, so I met Sophia on the set of Dinner with the Alchemist. Um, that was the first feature that Kevin and I did together. Um, she was one of the actors. And we were just talking um, about awkward sex movies, <laughs> awkward sex movies that um, star men. And um, it kind of evolved to even rom-coms that lead women and how inauthentic all of it is. 
Um, and I just thought like, oh, well, I could do it. I could, I could just write all this authentically. I have, um, you know, pretty high recollection of my past. I just turn on like a Selena Gomez or Taylor Swift song and I'm like right back there. Um, (laughs) So, uh, yeah. And that's, that kind of spawns all of it um, was just a simple conversation. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you see it? Can, how, how far out do you see you continuing this? I mean, with the success it's had, do you feel like you can continue production and go into additional seasons? I would love a second season. I think if people keep watching it and it keeps, you know, the word of mouth keeps spreading, then there's a very good chance of it. Um, we've had a couple of production companies um, reach out to us. Um, and I have an idea for a second season, but I can't say it because it'll ruin the first season. <laughs> but um, <laughs> don't spoil it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would love it. I would love a second season. Now, I'm curious because so I know when I came on uh, your project, it was during the pandemic. Was it it was either late 2020 or 2021? But I know it was like height of pandemic. Right. Have you written everything like all six episodes before the pandemic? Because I know it's been kind of a long process, right? I think you guys shot some of this like maybe as early as 2017 or 2018. So did you just have the three in the beginning that you had retooled and then add on? Or like, I guess I'm just asking about momentum. Yeah, I did. I wrote everything. And then um, as I go on, I keep rewriting. Mm. Um, So a lot changed from our, our chunk of filming before the pandemic and then during the height of the pandemic, um, you know, I discovered that both Sophia and another actor, Stephen, could sing. And so I wrote in a musical number um, so that I guess that gap in filming helped out with brainstorming and allowing rewrites. Um, and then a couple of things I rewrote, um, you know, like, the day that we were on set and there was a scene coming up and I was like, I have a better line. So I rewrote it and pitched it to the actors for them to deliver it another way. Um, so as long as I have, I'll keep evolving. That's awesome. Until I can't anymore. <laughs> or until they say cut and you're like, okay, yeah. I, guess, I guess it's done. <laughs> and I mean, you know what, this just occurred to me too, since you did have that gap, did you do test audience stuff with the first three episodes in between shooting the last part? We did. And I'm a huge fan of test audiences when it comes to comedies because mm-hmm. they're so easy. <laughs> you just, so we just tucked in a corner and we listened to all the laughs. Mm-hmm. Um, we did not tell anyone to put their phones away or anything. We didn't give them any restrictions. So we also marked down where, when people were pulling out their phones. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we knew to revisit those moments. And did you have any difference? Because it is, you know, with a female lead written by a woman, kind of geared towards women, although, you know, I think everybody enjoyed it in our audience. But did you notice a big difference between how men reacted and women reacted to like the comedy Um, and the situations? I don't think that this is giving too much away. The most, the, the biggest thing that was, interesting to me was um in episode three there was a sex scene um and everyone was laughing men and women were both laughing and then afterwards um two women came up to me and they said so oh my goodness you captured sex so honestly thank you so much for doing that why do you think the guys were laughing um and I found that to be so I and I wish I could have like gone back and asked um, because these the women um, said, yes, this, that's how sex is for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and the man, um, the, the man in the scene is the punchline. Mm. Um, and so they were just so confused as to why the men were laughing. Um, huh. And. To be clear, I don't think that's all men. Um, so uh, I think it's fair that the men were laughing. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that more carefully and see what what I missed. It's funny because we did actually. So I remember we had a screening before we came on set to do the the last three episodes. So I probably saw it and it didn't register, but it's not. I'm trying to remember like 
was there anything awkward that like would make a man feel awkward? Because I liked it. I remember I was really excited watching the first three episodes. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to be part of this project. But also, I'm a woman <laughs> watching right. it. So for me, I probably wasn't the person to be like, ooh, that's weird. But huh. Right. Yeah, Tom, I would be interested to see your opinion as a man if you thought something was like, oh. But I then mean, maybe... I know there have been reactions to things because I, I remember seeing a movie where uh, a male character gets kind of, you know, bonked in the in the balls and and uh, the entire audience, all the men just kind of like, oh, you know, they shift in their seats a little bit because they they almost, you know, they, they like that hurts. <laughs> so <laughs> from so from a negative perspective, that's that's uh, something that definitely happens. There is a a, uh, a psychological connection to to seeing that on screen. So uh, I can imagine the awkwardness probably as well, um, you know, reverberated with the men in the audience. Well, I mean, I was just curious because, like, for example, you know, one of the biggest hits this summer was Barbie, which is written by a woman, geared towards women. You know what I mean? And it's so interesting to hear the divisions. Um, Most women liked it. And then men are split. Some men really liked it and some men really hate it. And so it's interesting to hear why the men are so split on it. And that's why what I was thinking when I asked that, because I thought because it is geared more towards a woman's perspective were the men like super polarized or not but it doesn't sound like they were so that's really good yeah and I I think it's interesting um because we you know we have we have awkward scenes um where either Sophia's character or my character are the punchline and we have a lot of scenes where the men are the punchline um and we ran into a lot of trouble with casting, I think, because um, men are not used to being put in that position. Um, mm. So it, it was it, it was a surprising um, obstacle to overcome. Um, so we found ourselves like having to be more explicit in our casting notices. Um, in order to, I guess, weed out any actors that might be uncomfortable. But we had more trouble casting men than we did women. Interesting. Did you have guys who like read the script and just like were weirded out or something? Is that like what happened or? Absolutely. Um, So we had guys that were fine with doing a sex scene or fine Mm -hmm. with, you know, um, being in a sexual situation. But then when they read it and saw that they were the punchline. Yeah. They were suddenly very uncomfortable with it. Wow. That's interesting. That's really yeah. because again, I I mean, for the raunchy factor, again, I would put it at like PG thirteen, so I don't think that's an issue. But it, it, I guess it comes down to that whole male and female gaze thing, right? You know, I think so. And for uh, for me, you know, none of the nothing that's written in there or nothing that's in the show is remarkable. Mm-hmm. It's all pretty unremarkable events. Um, but I think when you think about like what's you know the kind of movies that are out there um and even even something like um i don't know even with movies starring women um men are rarely put in a situation where they're sexually awkward or vulnerable Mm, Um, that's true yeah unless it's like 40 year old virgin and but even when he does finally finally have sex at the end of the movie, she's like so sex drunk that she can't even speak. Yeah. You know? (laughs) Yeah. Which is funny because like, you know, frankly, in reality, it's not always like, you know, ah, choir singing. Like sometimes it is awkward and uncomfortable and you're like, that was that, you know? So I mean, right? you're just being honest, but maybe people don't like seeing that honesty on screen right um i think a lot of times probably more often than people admit it's it's just unremarkable yeah that's interesting wow Wow. this is better than an episode of vogue (laughs) cosmo oh my gosh well i mean it's just it's just funny because again like i said coming coming at it from a woman's perspective i thought everything was fine. Like I would not have expected that, but it makes sense that maybe some guys, especially if they, you know, as actors, we play kind of close to our, uh, ourselves. And so maybe if they were like, you know, I'm the 
brooding, sexy, leading man. They don't think of that in their persona. So you never know. But Right, right. That is crazy. So then what's next? Are you working on season two or working on other projects? What's happening? Um, I have I have a few spec scripts. Um, so I I had a I have I'm working on spec scripts now because I just finished some professional assignments. So I delivered a script to Hallmark. So now I'm in like this waiting period of waiting for um, everyone more important to me to read it and give me um, their notes as to what's wrong with it. Oh, no, Um, (laughs) it's fine. (laughs) That's the way it goes. It's all collaborative. Um, and then a family film that I wrote a year ago, um, is in post-production now. I think it's almost complete, um, or in the finishing stages. Um, so now I'm in kind of this, you know, dead zone, um, where I'm trying to work on my spec scripts because, um, as a, as an unwrapped writer, that's my currency Mm. is finished scripts. And we're waiting for that machine to start up now that the strikes are kind of hopefully mostly figured out. Right, (laughs) right. Yeah. So there's a bit of that delay. Well, that's awesome. Good luck to you. Keep us posted on how it's going. Let us know when those get made and distributed and when Sex Expectations 2 can come out. And if people want to find you online, how can they do so? Um, My only public social media account is Instagram and is at Jenna St. John. Um, with a period after the T, so Jenna S T dot John, um, and they can find Sex Expectations on Instagram as well at at Sex Expectations TV. Very cool. And everyone, make sure to check it out on Apple, and it is on Amazon, right? Correct. Okay, that's what I thought. I said, hmm, maybe I got this wrong. Apple, Amazon. Where else is it at? It's just on Apple and Amazon. Um, It'll open up to more platforms. We're just waiting to hear back on a release date. So as soon as we get those, um, we'll have, um, we'll blast it on our social media. Can't wait. Good luck with that. Yeah. Thank you. And for the rest of you, we will see you in a few weeks. In the meantime, you can find us online at writersgrouptherapy.com and on Instagram, x everywhere else at WG Therapy. We will see you soon.